takes a lot of supplies probably the most that we've used yet it's really a lot so I'm gonna run them across the bottom of the screen Bob Ross style to do this you are gonna need a pencil you're gonna need an eraser you are going to need an old cup of coffee or tea that doesn't have any sugar or creamer in it, just black coffee or black tea. If you don't have black coffee or black tea, you could use a tiny little bit of brown paint and a whole lot of water, but use the coffee or the tea. It looks really nice. It makes a really nice wash on your paper. And if you're like me, then you have an old cup of tea that you didn't finish that's so been sitting on your desk for, you know, an hour. Anyways, so why not paint with it, right? You're gonna need gold paint and black paint and white paint, definitely. Now, you'll also need green paint and optionally, you might want blue paint red paint and pink paint. That is a lot of colors. Once you have them started, we can get to work. Okay, so let's start by looking at the original painting. So we're gonna need lots of spirals in our drawing. And we're gonna start with pencil, which will follow up with a coffee wash. So first step is just to make your sketch of your tree. And you can make your spirals go off the page or leave them so that they fit on the page. Just do whichever you prefer. And I'm just adding a bird like we saw in our reference. And don't forget to add the little sort of flowers that we saw, like in the example. And maybe add some small twiggy spirals to your larger spirals.
We are almost done with our pencil drawing. You can let it go off of the top of the page or you can leave it so that it fits on the page. Do whichever you prefer. branches to go. some of the details to your tree. Don't get too bogged down in detail. You're gonna be painting over a lot of this, but it is nice to go ahead and draw some of it in advance, just to give you an idea of what you're doing. draw in a little flower bed under your tree. Gonna add a big spot of moss on my tree as well. any flowers to your flower bed that you would like to see there.
right, you are done drawing in pencil. It's time for the coffee wash. If you have coffee or tea, go ahead and brush that onto your paper. Just make sure it is free of sweetener or creamer because if you're putting your sugary stuff on your paper, that's how you get ants. If you don't have coffee or tea, you could just use a tiny bit of brown paint watered down to do this. Let it dry and join me for step two. Our first color that we're using is gonna be gold. Let's go ahead and set up our palette with gold, white, green, black, red, blue, light blue, light pink. All right, that's our palette. Let's begin with our gold paint. So obviously the bulk of this painting, the tree and branches are going to be gold. You can use a small brush to fill in smaller spaces in your painting and use a larger brush for the larger branches and trunk. Chances are your gold paint is quite thin, so you really don't have to worry about covering up any of these details. Just sort of glaze over them and you should still be able to see them through your paint. If your paint is too thick, you can add a little bit of water or medium to sort of thin it out a little bit and make it more transparent. I love how quickly you can start to kind of see what your finished product is going to look like with this painting. As soon as you get that gold on there, you're really going to get to imagine what it's going to look like when you have completed it.
If you don't have metallic paint, you could absolutely use yellow for this and get a very similar look. Okay, we have like one branch left. Alright, I bet your art project is looking amazing. Let's move on to our white paint. Go ahead and add your dots to your tree. And this is also a great time to touch up any areas where you went out of the lines. This will do two things. It'll sharpen up your edges for your tree. It'll hide any mistakes and it will add a little variety to your background. So instead of just having that flat light brown from our coffee wash from earlier, now you have a little bit of white, you have your light brown, and it just adds a little more detail and depth to your painting. And I'm going to go ahead while I'm using my white and go ahead and add just a little bit to the bird. I do plan to make this bird black, but I do want some shiny white highlights on there. I'm going to go ahead and block those in.
you're doing great and we are almost done with the white paint. again and I'm just gonna block in the horizon remember the horizon is an important part of any landscape it is what separates the sky from the land in your picture I'll fill in the rest of my ground here and I'll add a little bit of red to my gold to make a really nice warm tone. I'm just gonna layer that over my horizon and the ground in my painting. Next step is the green paint. Paint in any little leaves that you drew or moss that you have growing on your tree. Go ahead and paint in our flowers using our red paint. If you're using a different color for your flowers, that's fine too. But once you've got those blocked in, you can go ahead and paint in your grass. If you paint with a small brush and do small vertical strokes of paint, 
it will look much more like individual blades of grass. If your grass is looking a little flat, don't worry, we're gonna go back and add some more texture to this later. For now, you can just scratch it with your paintbrush handle and that'll help it a lot. All right, let's mix a tint of green. You probably know from previous classes with me that a tint is made by adding white to a color to make it lighter. You'll just mix white and green to make your nice light tint and paint that wherever you would like. All right, time for pink paint. I'm gonna add some pink flowers to my painting. Really, you can do any kinds of colors that you would like for your flowers. You do not have to use the same colors as me. And let's move on to our light blue paint. These flowers are looking a little flat, but we'll come back in with some dark blue paint later and give them some more detail. For now, grab your brown paint and mix it with your gold. Keep on mixing until you get a good color. And let's add a shadow to the ground first. This ground is looking a little orangey and intense to me, so if we layer on this brownish gold, that'll kind of help to subdue that overly bright orange. Okay, that's looking a lot better. It's still nice and warm like it was before, but now it's not overly bright. All right, get your detail brush and your black paint. And let's just add some details.
We are almost done painting our black details. Just a little more to go. All right, get your dark blue paint and your detail brush. It's time to add some shadows to these blue flowers and make them stand out a little bit better. And go ahead and add any other dark blue details that you would like to see in your painting. All right, let's add our shadows to our tree. Our painting's nearly done, but the tree's looking a little flat. With your brown and gold mixture, you're just gonna think carefully about how the edges of your tree would fall into shadow, and just add those in. If you need a little more gold paint, you can get a little more and just blend it evenly. You don't have to do this on every single part of your tree, but anywhere that you feel that your tree is fading into your background or you feel like it seems like there should be a shadow, you should definitely add this detail. It'll make a big, big difference by adding some dimension to your tree. When we compare the half on the left with shadows to the half of the tree that's on the right, which we haven't shadowed in yet, you can really see that this makes an enormous difference in your art. It looks so much more three-dimensional. Once you add those shadows, it looks like it's coming off the page. It really makes a big difference. Just make sure as you're adding your shadows that you're not covering up all your nice shimmery gold from earlier. You just want these shadows to be at the very, very edges of your branches and trunk.
I want a little more shadow near this bird. I want it to look like it is casting a shadow here on this branch. So I'm just going to block in some darker shadow here. left is our finishing touches adding individual blades of grass any small details that you feel like you missed or need to adjust we are almost done tried this painting let me know how it went thank you for painting with me today <laughs>